Go. Go. Hi, my name is Maria. Welcome to my class. Today we are going to solve a non-homogeneous partial differential equations using the Laplace transform. Over here in the board we have our partial differential equations referring to a long string along with the boundary conditions and the initial conditions. <clears throat> our goal is to find u as a function of x and t. In order to solve this PDE using the Laplace transform, we are going to solve it doing various steps. Step 1, we are going to apply the Laplace transform to every single term on the PDE. Starting with the right hand side, we know that the Laplace transform of d squared u dt squared is equal to s squared u of x comma s minus s u of x comma zero minus u sub t of x comma zero. When we look at our initial conditions, we can see that u of x comma zero is zero, therefore this term cancels, and u sub t of x comma zero is zero, therefore this term also cancels. Moving to the left hand side of the PDE equation, uh, we know that the Laplace transform of a squared d squared u d sorry dx squared is equal, this is a constant, so this is equal to a squared Laplace transform of d squared u dx squared, which is equal to a square d square dx square integral zero to infinity e minus s t u of x comma t dt and this is just going to be equal to a square d square u of x comma s over dx square <clears throat> and finally the third term that we have on the PDE uh, the Laplace transform of g, g is a constant and so we can place it outside and the Laplace transform of 1 is just 1 over s so we have g over s. Now we are going to substitute every single term that we have here back into our original PDE. Therefore what we have is a squared d squared u dx squared minus g over s is equal to s squared u. I want to point out that what we have here as u is a function of x comma s and what we want to do is achieve a function of u, uh, u as a function of x comma t. So let's just keep that in mind. Now we are going to place this function in a standard form. So what we'll have is d square u dx square minus s square u over a square is equal to g over s a square and what we have done now is that we have converted a PDE into an ODE and uh, now we will move on to a step two in order to uh, do a step two we are going to look for a particular solution and a homogeneous solution so we will start with this part first and we will look for a characteristic um, equation. So we will have, I will use the symbol lambda, lambda squared minus s squared over a squared is equal to zero. And this means that lambda is gonna be equal to plus minus s over a. We know that solutions for these ordinary differential equations are as follows. U, let's call it u sub c of x comma s is equal to c1 e to the minus x over a x plus c2 e to the sx over a. Very good. Now what we need to do is find a particular solution and for that we will use the method of undetermined coefficients. So what I will do is I will I will continue here. So for that we will have u sub p and just to refresh your memory, we will have ax plus b. We will take the first partial of u sub p, which is a, 
and then the second partial which is 0. Now we will take these solutions and substitute them back into this equation over here. So we will have the second partial will be 0 minus a square over a square of ax minus a square over a square of b and all of this has to be equal to g over s a square. Very good. Now we will have to solve a and b and to do that I'm going to move to this side of the board over here and remember that we are still on step 2 and we are trying to solve for constants a and b. So we have an x term and to solve for x term we combine all the terms that have dx. In this case it will be just a square over a square a which is equal to 0. Therefore we conclude that a is equal to 0. Now for all the terms that have x to the 0 which is 1 uh, we just have minus a square over a square b is equal to g over s a square. So now we simplify to find b and we have that b is equal to negative g over s cube. Very good. So now we know that over u of x comma s is going to be equal to u sub c plus u sub p which is equal to c1 e to the minus sx over a plus c2 e to the sx over a minus g over s cube. So now we have finished step 2. We have found our u sub x comma s and found the solutions for the complementary and the particular solutions. Now uh, we will move on to step 3. For step 3 we will look at our boundary conditions here. And we can see, remember that this is a long string, and uh, as you can tell uh, for this example, the limit as x approaches infinity of u sub x is equal to zero. What this means is that this term over here, c sub 2, will be approaching infinity. And that means that c sub 2 is equal to zero because this term here will decay uh, very fast however this one cannot be the case and so we conclude c sub 2 is equal to zero and then our other boundary condition we can say that u of 0 comma s is equal to zero and this is going to be c1 minus g s cube and that means that c is equal to g over s cube sorry c1 Therefore, we know that u of x comma s is going to be equal to g over s cube e to the minus s x over a minus g over s cube. Very good. We are not finished yet because our goal, as I mentioned before, is to find u of x comma t. To find u of x comma t, we have to take the inverse Laplace transform of u of x comma s and in this case we can treat g as a constant and we can pull it outside and we can say that this is the Laplace transform of 1 over s cube e to the minus sx over a minus 1 over s cube and this means by simplification you can look at a table as well over u of x comma t is going to be equal to g over 2 t minus x over a square u of t minus x over a minus 1 half g t square. So this is our solution for these uh, partial differential equations. Very good. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this problem has been very informative with you. As you can see, math is a lot of fun, and I encourage all of you to learn more about it. And good luck to you in all your classes. Thank you.